While the zeros were added to the ends of checks written for CEOs, the scales were set with the hungry mouths weighing down the other side of the balance. Billionaires sit in their 30-room homes and throw out food that they can't eat on their own while 700,000 children sit in broken homes, stomachs grumbling, moaning for a crust of bread or a piece of meat in this, the richest nation in the world, who let our own people suffer. Pulling a shade between the classes as if the masses are rich, but guess what, y'all? We're all fucking poor. The underclass, the starving, the working poor, wearing fingers to bones, just trying to bring home just enough to choose between shelter and food. And I guess at least we have a roof over our heads, unlike all those forgotten vets who make up 40% of the homeless. Because apparently, Matthew didn't deserve government support for the leg he lost in Afghanistan. And Maria didn't suffer from post-traumatic stress after her sergeant forced her to shoot an entire innocent Iraqi family down, dead in their home, after a fruitless illegal search to sur for suspicious goods. No, she just wanted that check you wouldn't write for her. Now they're both on the streets waiting, cardboard pleas for some kind of sympathy or proof that humanity is still somewhere buried beneath the hard white marble of the American dream. We sit there staring as Galatea screams through the plaster, begging these masters of war to release her beauty on the world. She knows that what the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing that there's just to live on. But she also knows that no one is listening. No one is listening. No one is listening to her. So she just keeps to her dreams, hoping that someday we will all just wake up. Back to Sarah Matthew. <laughs> I spend a lot of time trying to water down my southern accent. Most days I hide it well, but others you'll catch it. Running thick as molasses. See, I've always hated that conversation. Oh, how cute is a southern belle? Where are you from? <laughs> they try so hard, but they can never get it right. Don't realize how insulting it is to assume that I need to be talked down to. Newsflash, Southern is not synonymous with ignorant. Granted, we have our backward ass hicks and racist religious bigots, but some of us are capable of forming our own beliefs <coughs> and don't let others tell us what to think. No matter where life takes me, make no never mind about how well I've mastered book learning. I will always say y'all when I talk to my friends. I don't care what you Yankees say, I put my food in a buggy when I go to the Winn-Dixie. Somewhere along the line it was burnt into my head that anything that ends in past tense is written with T, not E-D. And uh -huh. only a choice few words actually end in G. Bless my heart, I'll never truly understand English grammar. Maybe I just spent one too many summers in Savannah. Ain't nobody gonna get me to eradicate these simple little twists of dialect because there ain't a thing wrong with the way I learned to talk. The trailer park is my hood and I ain't never judged nobody based on the color of their skin or the religion they're mixed up in or the place they're from, but I've sure had these judgments slung my way, hearing how women who talk like me are destined for little more than a truckload of deformed kids and life in a shotgun trailer. Let me tell you something. I've got dreams so big they done popped the scenes of synapses in my brain and I am more than capable of getting where I want to be. Just because I was born in the land of backward thinking doesn't mean I can't move forward. Where you're from will always be ingrained in you, but it certainly does not define you. That's why I try to hide my southern accent. Naturally thick as molasses. Because I want people to see me before they sling judgment my way for the way words roll. Wow. 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 I was recently reading about the child prostitution in India, and this is what came the pain that's coming It's called Do We Even Stand for Anything if All We Do Is Write About Something? Tell me, what is the point in this? I sit here writing shit like somehow the words on this page will actually wash up on foreign shores with their groundbreaking honesty and hope 
soaking through the closed minds and cold hearts of those who don't realize that humans aren't chattel, and they deserve to be treated better than cattle, not the other way around, India. With your child sex trade that rivals the number of Africans the white man relocated for his own self-interest. Millions of little girls sold into brothels by the grandfathers who first sold their own daughters into prostitution. Of course, the guilt-ridden white journalist flocks to the grimy doors of whorehouses so he can write the world's next big expose, claiming the tears he's wept for the world's injustice will be published in the newsprint. See page 6A for photocopies of the original tear-stained manuscript. And I can't stand knowing that I'm doing the same. But here I am again, just fucking writing, just fucking writing, just fucking writing, instead of taking action, just like you, reporter with your journalism degree, seeking satisfaction in this self-absorbed sea of me, spelling out these words with the ink of my blood like the sincerity will make it worth more, like my having said something will make a difference, like realizing that I realize this is going on is better than being oblivious. But I know, unless I actually stand, start a movement, Scream for abolition. Steal little Indian girls aged only five to ten years from their semen-drenched brothel beds where they've gotten used to sleeping in the stench of these men who rape them, these men who with their uncaring lustful thrust pour into their fragile wounds the diseases that will have these young dreamers soon locked dead in their tombs. Unless I get up and actually move more than just my goddamn fingers I'm just as guilty for these crimes as those who commit them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.